you been doing since your last uh, your last fight? We saw each other back in Erfurt in May. What have you been doing since then? Just been living, man. You know, hard fights, take some time off and relax. You know, find out what this hard work is for. You know, just to live well. So I've just been living. I know you like motorcycles. I've seen you out. It's a pretty cool bike you've got. Uh, you spend a bit of time on that, yeah? Yeah, a lot of time and a lot of money. But you know, you gotta if you want something the way you want it, you can't be cheap. How's it uh, been going with the sparring with uh, Vitaly today? Um, it's been going well. As you can see, my shoulder's busted again, you know, and my shoulder doesn't bust unless I'm sparring hard. Um, he's been, the first week, we kind of he kind of took it easy on all of us, and this week has been turning it up. You know, Monday was a hard day. Tuesday, pretty much, he, I mean, he, he put in some work the first few rounds. You guys weren't allowed to film it, but it's getting closer to the day, so it's going to get worse. So I'm just glad that my shoulder's busted a little bit. They're going to tell me to rest there and the rest can take the punishment. I was going to say, you get a little bit of a let off now, do you? Yeah, I get, I get to have a break, you know. Um, I, I don't like to, you know, like kind of use excuses to get out, but, you know, I am in pain, so I'll take it when I can get it. You mentioned uh, Lebedev and also Vladarchik um, back in May after the fight. Any any chance? Are you still going to head for those guys, or is it is it proving it difficult to get hold of them? Listen, everybody. It's like everybody didn't pay their phone bill because their phones are cut off. Nobody's answering. You know, I mean, everybody's just everybody bought a pair a pair of new running shoes and they just start running. You know, they want to fight each other in Europe. Uh, I, you know, whoever they tell me to fight, I'll fight. I don't. I don't bo- it don't bother me. Uncle Hook, he's already running, man. He's calling out Vitaly, calling out all kind of... He's just throwing names in there, hoping one sticks. And if one sticks, he's going to take that fight. He, I mean, come on. I don't blame him. He's a businessman. He doesn't want to take a dangerous fight for less money. He wants to take a dangerous fight and bigger money. So if he loses, he say, hey, he was heavyweight anyway, like he did against Pavekin. But he doesn't want to fight. But we'll chase him. We'll chase him down till we get him. We got. I mean, we got to make. We got to close this this thing, man. I felt like I got robbed twice, and he felt like he won twice. So people have mixed uh, thoughts on that. So we have to like put all people's thoughts aside and just do it one time and call it a day. I think in two, three years, when these guys retire and the heavyweight division is a mess, I could knock out bums like that. Yeah, I'm talking to Dillian. <laughs> Yeah, say something. Oh, there he come. There he come. It's, it's a Hollywood thing. Was, don't don't let them see your face because huh? you'd be embarrassed. That, you gotta, if you ever dream of knocking me out, even if you wake up and apologize. I would knock this okay? kid out. Hey, okay? tell him to stop. Okay. Tell him to stop. He, he right. can only dream about knocking me out. Right. He gave you a warning earlier. Apparently he was going to He's fast, but he have no power. Okay, you keep saying that till I touch you. That's what Terry Dunstan thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Enzo thought. Uh-huh. Training session. If if uh, Dylan's bringing the 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 power and the and the and the heavyweight, what are you bringing? Wait, Jill, Dylan's bringing the power. <laughs> you gotta say. I think there's a typo somewhere over there. Back up, son. <laughs> no, um, I think I just bring speed in like you? different angles. I don't yeah. know, speed and angles, and that's it. I mean, I can. You're faster, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pretty much faster than everybody in this place, <laughs> but they all think they're faster than I am. Mouth is for quite oh yeah, my mouth is real fast. That's my that's my cardio. I don't know. I wake up at seven in the morning. I just recite the Bible. That's my running. I'm in shape. Um, Ashley Theophane, he's he's said something earlier uh, this week. He was he was asked about the state of British boxing. Uh-huh. Did you read that? He's gone through most of the British boxers, and he, he, your name your name came up, and he said, I quote. Olaf Falabi is a Londoner, but not very well known in Britain. He has achieved a lot on his travels, fighting in America and Germany. He has come close to beating one world champion, Marco Huck, twice. He would definitely be world champion one day. A little positive help with his marketing and communications could do wonders. What do you think about that? Hey, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like a smart guy, first of all. No, I mean, I've, I, I, I've, I don't know him personally, but I've seen his, like, his videos and stuff. He trains up in Vegas, doesn't he? Sometimes. Like, sometimes he trains in Vegas. Uh, he's got a point there, you know, but I've never been the dude that just, you know, does the whole Hollywood thing to get attention. I kind of feel like you have to fight your way to the top, and I've been doing it. Hey, listen, I got four to five draws on my record. How do you do that? Because I go to people's hometown and I fight them. It doesn't matter what anybody says. He's the best in the world. Not, but I'll go there and fight. That's what kills me when people call themselves world champions. Now, 
Back in the day, Muhammad Ali, all those guys, they used to travel to different countries, come to Germany, two weeks on a boat to come and fight for a world championship. That's when they called the world champions. This time, these guys are fighting in a continent and they call themselves a world champion. I feel like that's what's wrong in boxing. Everybody's just staying in their hometown and getting hometown decisions. Go outside, fight. Let create a buzz around boxing again, but nobody wants to do it. Let me ask you then, once you're, once you're world champion, mm-hmm. where are you going to put your first fight? Is it going to be London? I would hope so, because I think bringing the belt back to London would be a great thing, and I think the fans will support that.